Hey everyone, so in today's video I'm going to be doing just a beginner's guide to betta fish and I'm going to be talking about um, basically what you're going to need and also some additional facts that you might need or want to know when you're about to get your first betta fish. I'm going to be talking about housing, so this is basically the tank and what you need to have in it, um, the decor, plants and substrate that I would suggest you use, the food you should feed your betta and if you should supplement with anything, and talking about tank mates, whether you can have them or what kind of fish you can have living with your betta. If you're looking to get a betta, you do have to keep in mind that they're going to live around two to five years in captivity. They can live a shorter life and they can live a longer life. You're not going to have this fish for 20 years, but you're not going to have it for only a couple of months. So that is one thing to keep in mind. Now the approximate commitment of this fish weekly and daily would be to feed your fish daily and also do water changes weekly. So the first thing that I'm going to go over is housing. So this is the kind of tank you should have for your betta and what key components of the tank um, you should have in order for your betta to be as happy and healthy as possible. This is kind of the biggest thing and it's also the most highly debated thing. I would say get yourself a tank that is two and a half gallons or more. The two and a half, the threes, and the fives, I don't see a big range of activity difference in those. Um, which is why I just agree that two and a half is the um, minimum that I choose. You don't generally want to have a tank that's very high, you generally want a tank that is a little wider. So that is another thing. Um, so when you're looking for space to put a tank, you want to make sure that it can go, um, that there's more space this way than space this way. Your tank should have for your betta is a heater. Again, this is from personal experience where a betta's activity level and color and everything just goes way up when they have a heater. Um, so a heater to me is a must because they are tropical fish. Also going to want a thermometer. Um, the only way to really test that the heater is working the way that it's supposed to is if you have a thermometer. So now the next thing that your tank should always have is a filter. So now moving on to the things that you're going to want in your tank. Um, and this goes for decor, plants, and substrate. Um, as far as decor goes, decor is pretty much like what you want to put in your tank really fits on what theme you want your tank to be, but there is one item that you're going to want to have in your tank, and that's somewhere for them to hide. No matter what it is, whether it's a castle, a rock, a ship, um, or a pineapple, um, any of those work, but you're just going to want to make sure that they have a place to hide so that if they need some space, they can go and get it. As far as plants go, you can use live plants or you can use artificial plants. Live plants, the bonus of them is pretty much no matter what, um, they're always going to be soft enough for your betta's fins, and I do hear that they have health benefits. If you use artificial plants, um, they might be cheaper depending on where you buy them from. Uh, they will last forever, there's no way you can kill them. However, the problem with these plants is you can have some that are a little too spiky, um, and that they won't be safe for your betta in the fact that they may tear his or her fins. Um, so that is the thing with plants. Now as far as substrate, you can use various different types of substrate. Um, you can use gems, you can use rocks, you can use sand, um, you can use dirt. Gems that I use, they actually didn't come from a pet store, and this is totally okay if you don't want to buy the gems from the pet store. You just want to make sure that they don't say not aquarium safe. However, if they don't say that, then they should be good for your aquarium. Now moving on to the food. So the food basically covers how often you should feed your betta, what you should feed your betta, if you should supplement it with anything, um, and everything like that. Now I choose to feed my betta's pellets because flakes have been known to cause bloating. You generally want the first few ingredients to be meat. Now another thing is you're generally going to want to get a pellet that is small. Bettas have tiny mouths and they also have tiny stomachs, so generally having bigger pellets, they're going to be harder for them to chew, swallow, and some of them might even reject them. Now you can supplement your betta's uh, meal with different things, um, kind of as a treat. Um, so betta's really like brine shrimp, they like blood worms, black worms, so you can definitely get them if you want to treat him or her, but those are not needed, they're optional, um, and they definitely shouldn't be the only food source. Now the last thing that I'm going to cover, betta's and tank mates. Do they go together? What kind of tank mates can they have? Can you put bettas together? Stuff like that. Now you may have heard a betta referred to as a Siamese fighting fish. And this is because if you put two males together, they will fight, hence their name, and they will even fight to the death. Um, so you do not want to put two males together. If you have a bigger tank and you do want to have two bettas in that tank, then you can do what I do and you can divide the tank. 
Um, you can buy dividers from the store, or you could do what I do, and I just made one out of craft mesh that I got at the dollar store for 62 cents. Now when I say male, does this mean that two female bettas can go together? Yes and no. Female bettas actually can live together um, in something known as a betta sorority. However, you're going to need more than two. Basically, you take a group of about five or so females in a tank 20 gallons or larger, and they all live together. And with enough plants and hiding spaces, they can coexist. Bettas actually can live in community tanks with other fish as well, if they're the right temperament and they are the right size and shape. But for the most part, um, schooling fish like tetras, guppies, um, snails, shrimps, things like that, they always go together perfectly, and I'm sure there's more, but there are some fish with peaceful temperaments and aren't going to, um, aren't too aggressive that won't fight the betta. But two kinds of fish that you don't want to house a betta with is something really aggressive, so something like a tiger barb or any other fin nippers, and also you don't want anything with two flashy fins, like something like an angelfish that has those big fins. Um, that's going to just kind of stress your betta out and your betta may attack the angelfish as well. But if you're someone who really likes the color of a betta, however you don't want to just have a tank with one fish in it, which I totally understand, um, then the community tank may be a way to go. So I hope that I didn't go too off topic with this video or that I didn't go too much into detail. If you think that I didn't go into enough detail, then make sure you go watch one of those videos that have been popping up along the side throughout the video. Um, and I hope this video really helped you out if you're a new fish keeper or if you're just watching a video of mine and you are an experienced fish keeper, but you just wanted to see if there were any extra tips or anything like that. I hope to see you again in my next video and I'll see you next time. Bye!